When you look at a shipping container, the last thing that you think of is a house. But it never ceases to amaze me how people can take these cold metal boxes and turn them into wonderful welcoming homes. Today we're in Victoria where one young couple has taken three of these 20 foot shipping containers and turned them into a remarkably designed home. Hello, Amy. Hi, Bryce. Nice to meet you. Lovely to meet you. G'day, Rich. How's it going? Good. This house, it's super, super cool. This is actually three 20 foot shipping containers all attached together, isn't it? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. How did this all actually come about? We didn't need a big home, and I guess the shipping containers are already available to us, so we had use of them. So we kind of built to our needs. And also, we wanted to keep a low debt level so we can continue the lifestyle that we like, which is lots of holidays and going overseas with Rich being English and having family over there. So uh, it's another reason why we thought that a smaller dwelling would fit our lifestyle. We came to be living in this home about two years ago after traveling to Europe for yeah. your cousin's wedding. We really reevaluated what was needed in a home and also what the essential tick boxes in life were. So when we decided to go down the home building journey, we decided to go down the untraditional route. The design that you've come up with here is really cool. Can you tell me about how you actually laid them all out like this? Um, we wanted something that created a little bit of separation between the kitchen, dining, uh, the study, the living, and then our sleeping quarters. So we decided to stagger them to get the best passive solar design, as well as a little bit of interest with the links and the staggering of the containers. So it looks aesthetically pleasing when you drive up as well. With the three containers and then the adjoining factors together, do you know what the total size of this home is? Yeah, so it's around 49.2 square meters. And what about the property we're on right now? How did you come across this? It's my parents' property, so we are on five acres of it and they're on the other five acres, so it's been subdivided. This is a shipping container home, and yet looking at it, you really wouldn't think so because yeah. you've clad everything. Can you tell me a little bit about how you've done all of that? We've used a color bond product called Designer Panel. It's an interlock cladding. It's fantastic because it's low maintenance and it's very easy to install. So with cladding it, you've also gained that sort of space in between, which you can add insulation or you've got that air barrier in between the steel of the shipping container and the outside cladding. And um, that's also the same thing with the inside where you've got the inside clad too. You can also so gain that sort of extra 70 mil of space to insulate. So it's like sort of like a sandwich. We really tried to push the boundaries with this project with our insulation to gain a higher star rating because in Australia you require at least a minimum of six star. This home's 7.1. So we've got the double glazed timber windows and then the bulk insulation in the ceiling and also under the floor. Looking at the roof, this is a really clever design as well because Obviously, by having the additional roof, you're creating a little bit of shade and helping to cool down the space, but you've also filled it with solar. Is this house totally off the grid? Not completely off grid. Due to financial reasons, we couldn't afford batteries when we were first installing, but that is one of our aims for the future. We do have a feed-in tariff, so it does offset our usage, which is fantastic. Yeah, and the adventure of having this huge roof structure across all the containers is we're collecting our own water too. So there's a couple uh, large tanks out the back collecting water throughout the year. Excellent. What sizes are your tanks? We're collecting around 30,000 litres. We initially started off with 20,000 and due to a very dry summer and autumn, we decided to put another one in just to safeguard ourselves. So how many watts of solar did you manage to get on the roof here? We went for a 3.75 kilowatt system as there's only two people living in the house at this present time. Well, this is such a unique looking home. I cannot wait to see how it all works on the inside. Come on in. Yes, please. Thank you. This is stunning. We absolutely love our home. We um, really enjoy using this space. Uh, one of the big things was it being healthy for the human, the end user as well. Uh, so it's all zero formaldehyde joinery that's in place. So it's healthy for us to breathe. And the finish that we've put on the plywood as well is low VOC. So it's healthy for us to use. The style in here is very modern as well, isn't it? 
Absolutely. It's something that we went for. We just liked to be a bit timeless. So, you know, in 20 years time, we hope we're still living here and uh, we, you know, don't want to be changing things on trend or anything like that. We'd rather have a really nice clean line kitchen so we can avoid that. And tell me about the design of your kitchen. A big thing with our kitchen is we wanted a dishwasher just so if we were ever time poor, you could utilize that. So we decided to go with a half drawer dishwasher, which is nice and compact. We also wanted enough storage for pots and pans. We don't use many appliances, but there's enough storage for those bits that we do use. I obviously really enjoy my little bits and pieces of ceramics and cookbooks. So we made sure that they were always on show in the kitchen design as well. And you've got a really good amount of prep area here as well. Yeah, so you maybe think with having containers, you're almost restricted with your joinery. So it has to go into certain places, but we've been quite lucky with how it's positioned. So we really haven't lost too much prep space or storage space being a smaller container. And one of the things which is definitely a bit of a luxury for a smaller home is to have a dining table. Yeah, room for six. So. Absolutely. We love having friends come over. So one of the requirements was at least four. And we were lucky enough to thrift our lovely kitchen table uh, locally. And there's more than enough room in here to entertain six people over for lunch or dinner. Brilliant. And then over here we come to one of the first of the little joins in the containers. Yeah, so this is the first link which houses just the laundry and just a small pantry. So we didn't really want to have to make space in a small house for these sort of uh, appliances, like a washer. So we've really gained that sort of space in these links. And also having the doors on, you can have the washing machine and it minimizes the sound. So it's fantastic. You can have it going and being on your laptop and it's not overly distracting. So it's great because you can shut it away and forget what's happening behind there. And then what do we have over here in the next container? This is our lounge and study area. Definitely my favorite part of the house. And I can see why this is so cozy. Absolutely, it's so great. We have the north and the easterly aspects. So we gain some beautiful morning light in summer and then during winter, it really floods in. So sitting on that couch with the morning cup of tea is divine. Uh, but one of my favorite things is cozying up in winter in front of the wood burner. A wood burner like this so quickly just becomes the central feature of every home, doesn't it? Yeah. So we were lucky to get this out of another project. So it was a minimal cost for us and it really heats the house really well. In Australia, you can have pretty harsh temperature variations, can't you? And I've noticed that in this home, you're just utilizing fans. I don't see any air conditioning. No, that was another thing with the star rating. We made sure we had enough insulation to make sure it was thermally comfortable during winter. So we only needed the wood burner and also during summer where we only require the cross flow ventilation. So the natural wind cooling the home and also the use of the electric fans on the ceiling. We have only turned them on four times uh, last summer. Uh, we are very conscious about closing down the house when warm periods come through. So uh, it can be really nice and cool in here if we've shut down the house and there is none of that solar gain during those warm periods. Now, tell me about the seating area here as well, because it looks like you've built quite a bit of storage in this. Yes, yeah, so a lot of the sort of furniture we put into the house, there's no sort of like uh, furniture we bought in as such, apart from like the stools. So everything is built in storage. So it's a full depth drawer for each one. So it's functional furniture. We've also got all of our bed linen and towels and everything in the other drawers. But one of my favorite drawers is our tiny house wine cellar. I bet you're looking forward to when you're able to use that drawer again. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Six weeks and counting. <laughs> nice. And then over here we have your workspace. Yep, so really generous space, uh, really functional. So we kind of work a little bit from home or like our own projects in the evening and this is the perfect space for it really. I like how you've set it up that you both have your individual working space here too. Absolutely, you can obviously see from the decorating above who's who's and we do really enjoy having our sides of the study area. And then behind me here, this is another one of the links. Absolutely. So this is where we have some great hanging solutions as well as more hanging 
some more bookshelves and vacuums. So it's fantastic that we're able to utilize every single aspect of our home. And then what do we have in our last container? We have our bedroom as well as our bathroom. This is cool. It's really interesting how high you've raised the bed. A big thing, as we've mentioned, was the storage and making everything as functional as possible. So we decided to pick the bed up off the ground so we could have that storage. And this is a queen size bed? That's correct. So within those dimensions, that really does just give you a tremendous amount of volume underneath it to turn into storage. Yeah, and these drawers are full depth for the whole uh, depth of the, uh, the queen mattress. So very generous amount of storage. That's really cool. And that is a very neat drawer. Someone's taught you to fold. <laughs> Thank you very much, just Amy. <laughs> <laughs> so with the bed being this high as well, that's gotta be a bit of a mission to climb up on. How do you do that? We just do it with a lovely handy step ladder here. If there's anything to change about the design of the home, I think at this specific moment, it would be for to have the bed one draw lower. Yes, being 34 weeks pregnant, it's getting a little challenging getting up and down on that bed. But in the way of long-term things? No, nothing at all. And now onto the bathroom. Oh wow, the tile work in here is gorgeous. Oh, we've got a very, very talented tiler. Being a smaller home, we wanted to create uh, the illusion of there being a bigger space. So we went for full height tiles and also that wet room effect. So we didn't want any closed in areas. And by having the nib walls, it creates a little bit of storage and interest and depth um, to place plants and products and everything on there. So we really did think out the bathroom and how it would best be utilized. And it actually came out being a lot bigger than we anticipated. So it is a very generous bathroom. And you've got a flushing toilet here? Absolutely. So this is just into our septic system um, with the use of rainwater. And by having it all the way back to the wall with the system being built into the wall, not only creates this really handy nib wall, but it also makes for a more spacious area. So how long have you actually been living in the home now? 14 months since we've moved in. And how are you finding actually living in the space? We absolutely love it. And as you can probably see, we have another one on the way and we are going to utilize this space as, until baby number two comes along. So we will do some remodeling and make it work for our lifestyle going forward. One question I've constantly been asked is, you know, don't you regret not having a nursery to, to decorate? and it's kind of, it hasn't even crossed my mind being in a small home and not having a nursery to decorate. It's going to be fun setting up the little bits and pieces that we do have and they've been well thought out. So when the baby comes along, we do have a nice bassinet, which we have um, colour matched to our inbuilt furniture in the house. And with the laundry, how it is, it's going to be great space, you know, to change nappies. We are going to set all that up and utilize the laundry space to make that work for us. And again, shut it away so it's not staring us in the face. One of the great things with utilizing shipping containers is it is really easy just to add another one on when you need it too. Yeah, so even in that end container, we've sort of decided if we were going to extend where it would be. So even a window is positioned in a place where that's going to make it more easy to do in the future. I love that kind of future proofing because it just goes to show you've really thought this all through. Yeah, definitely. That's kind of like the great thing with containers is they're all going to be the same size. They're all going to slot together well, and it's never going to really be out of place. It's not like you're slapping on some out of the blue extension. It's going to be quite a uniform sort of growth for the house. This home is beautifully done. Can you talk to me about the cost involved in actually realizing this build? All up for the build, it cost us 145,000 Australian dollars. Uh, there is quite a bit of joinery obviously involved as well. So with a substantial amount of the cost being involved in the joinery aspect, that also includes all of our solar, all of our design fees, and also the septic treatment plant. For all of that together, and the size and the quality of this home, that's a great price. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. So one thing we really wanted was a quality home and also something that we're really proud of and that is aesthetically pleasing whenever you walk through the door. 
The fact that we thought so well about what we're putting into the house and how it's laid out and what joinery is working where, it's such a pleasant space to be in. This home for us, how we feel walking in at the end of a busy day or if we've been travelling for work or on holidays, it's very peaceful, not only because of the environment it's set around, but we have loved every aspect of this home from the design phase through to finish. So it's just a beautiful sanctuary to be in. You have both done such a great job of this home. It's awesome to see how well it's working for both of you and I'm sure it's gonna be great as your family grows. Thank you so much for sharing your home with me. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Bryce. Cheers. I am just so impressed with this house. Each and every aspect of it has just been so well considered, from the interior, which is very functional, right the way to the interesting aesthetics of the exterior. Already, as a couple, this house has served them very well, and there is no doubt in my mind that when the new member arrives, this is going to be a beautiful family home.